We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello, welcome to Fridge Cam. A little while back, we tested one of these rotating grills in a gadget review video. Now, you guys love them so much, we've asked our friend Ben, a chef, to come up with some recipes to push them to their limits. Ben, what are we making? Bit of an experiment, but I think we'll have a play with some rotisserie chicken, some dangly fish kebab, some rum glazed pineapple, and maybe even some bread twists if we have time. And when I talk about time, I've got two grills to try and save us time. Uh, well, we'll stand on the side and provide moral support and hope that there's food that we can eat afterwards. Number one, rotisserie chicken. Yes! Except I've gone poussin, because in theory, right, they'll cook quicker because they're smaller. Um, and I'm also thinking Peruvian. Peruvian poussin. I honestly, I adore rotisserie chicken, mm -hmm. but I would never in a million years make it at home because... You haven't got one of these? No. And doing it in the oven would be a right pain in your house. <laughs> so the question always, to brine or not to brine? I did. So this is in a solution of salt water with bay and peppercorn, and they've been in there for several hours, um, which should just make them super succulent as we cook. I now need to pat them dry. I'm thinking Peruvian flavours, so I've got a paste of onion and garlic. I just blended up onion and garlic. We're gonna add to that zest of a lime, amarillo pepper, and pisco. Um, the Peruvian brandy, and hopefully we're going to make a nice little glaze. Is there a way that we can guarantee that the flavour runs right through the bird rather than just on the outside? So a marinade does a number of things. It can tenderise, um, it can add flavour, and it can also give something that will glaze. Now, I've brined it, so the marinade's just going on now as a last minute in a glaze and a flavour. It's not going to go all the way through. What you could have done is marinate them and leave them overnight in a marinade instead of a brine. So I want this marinade all over. You've got the citrusy, you've got the chilli, You've got the alcohol, which obviously will cook off, but gives it a lovely flavour and has an acidity to it. And the onion and garlic, obviously raw at the moment, but should cook out. So, one. I mean, that looks like a great kebab already, doesn't it? Two. Poussin on poussin. And then the clip goes on the top there. Don't get rid of that because we're going to keep basting the birds as they go. What we do know is that cooking meat on the bone adds flavour. So hopefully all of these wonderful legs in the dark meat will be incredible, but also because the breasts and the poussin are quite small, they should do wonderful things too. We know that potato, really big ingredient in Peru as well. So I've just boiled some new potatoes and they're gonna go in the bottom. And then any juices that drip, which has all the amazing flavour, should start to roast those spuds as well. So really warm. <laughs> While we let that do its thing for maybe 35, 40 minutes, I don't know, we'll come back to it and test. Why don't we do number two? Number two, let's do something with this. A rum glazed pineapple. It's honestly. It's <laughs> I think it. we need to peel the pineapple, carve the pineapple, skewer the pineapple, and then get ready with a rum glaze. Dark brown sugar. Oh, chocolate fondant. Apple juice. Same again of a nice dark rum. And the lime that we zested for our rotisserie chicken, I'm going to put the lime juice into here. Heat it until the sugar dissolves. Now Baz, everything about this so far is speaking to your mm. flavour preferences. So Rum, um, sugar, and then he's going to glaze that on pineapple. And that must make your tongue just go like, mmm. <laughs> Sometimes you want to take the eye out of pineapple. 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 <laughs> Too easy. What I'm trying to do is cut out any of the tough bits. So that's it. More surface area for your rum glaze. It looks really cool. Oh, it's like a steamboat. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start off with the glaze, but I think the glaze is going to be something that will just continually baste as it gets more and more hot and sticky and cooked. Do these grills operate at a set temperature or are you choosing the temperature? The One Concept grill at 1800 watts has one power setting uh, and one rotating speed. So it's up to you to control when things are ready and, and stuff, but um, you just have the, the simple bit of control of on or off. For those of us who do have pineapple 
allergies. Um, could you recommend another fruit to use? We, we were thinking about what else we could do and we brainstormed lots of ideas. I think big chunks of watermelon would be quite cool. What I've done is just dry toasted off some desiccated coconut and we can sprinkle that over the pineapple when it's done. I reckon that's probably going to need 35, 40 minutes, much the same as the Poussin. Unlike the Poussin, where you want all the fat to dribble into your potatoes and cook those, with the pineapple, the sugar will burn to add a little bit of water just to stop it getting too sticky. Poussin's had about 30, 35 minutes. Now's the time to take it off the spit and carve it up. Careful, every bit of metal is hot. Brining, slow, even rotating cooking, hopefully succulent meat. Oh, that was a face. That was, oh, oh Gigi. <laughs> Naughty Poussin. <laughs> so the flavours are simple enough, they complement the chicken, we kind of knew that was going to happen. If you were doing this at home without one of these, you could spatchcock it and do a similar kind of thing. But what you get is the spectacle of it turning and the very even cooking. And I think the dripping of the fat and the marinade onto the potatoes is what makes that whole plate so special. So the chicken is excellent, but the potato that benefits from rotisserie chicken, that's where the magic is. When I first saw that, I presumed it was novelty. This is anything but, I reckon. Oh. I do have to say though, Ebers, you buy a rotisserie grill, you make rotisserie chicken, you're not exactly breaking any rules here. Let's try something bigger and better. So the pineapples had about the same 30 minutes. Even having carved it, you can see it is cooked and softened all the way through and then the caramelised bit on the outside. That is something special. That is fresh pineapple with a bite, but it's so sweet and caramelised. Are you sure you don't want to try something? I don't want to risk it. It's, it's worth it. it. There's a hospital just there. Yet again, the recipe would work absolutely fine on a regular grill. Grill your pineapple, then glaze it afterwards or during is fine. Little tip though, don't stick the pineapple on top of the machine. It's a little bit stuck. Well, yeah, it's cooked itself to it, isn't it? <laughs> That's a showstopper. Just a little bit. Go on, just... no, 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 it's not worth it. Trust me. It's worth it. Not for you at home. Don't do it at home if you're allergic, but for him. Number three, Medangly Fish Skewers. Right, need a better title, please. <laughs> this time we've got this, which has got uh, little marks in here and holes in here. And if you line it all up, you can basically put skewers like that. What I've gone for is a nice, meaty, fleshy fish. So we've got monkfish. Oh, yes. Nice Scottish, just off the coast of Scotland. But you could go for big prawns. You could go for something like hake or cod. You need something that's gonna hold its form, not like a place or a haddock or something that's much more flaky. I've marinated it in yogurt and a whole bunch of lovely spices that's perfect for tandoor. Garam masala, paprika, garlic, ginger, chili, lemon juice, yogurt. And then we'll skewer some stuff, some raw onion, nice big monkfish chunks, cherry toms, and keep going. I'll tell you why I'm interested in this. Mm -hmm. Because whenever I use a grill and I'm cooking fish or meat, my biggest worry is it's gonna stick to the grill. Yeah. So if this is not on a grill, and that works, that'd be decent. Perfect with chicken or lamb, um, paneer would be really good in this situation. Um, I'll put a little bit of a backstop on with our onion and it slots in there. Job done. Trying to work out how that's going to rotate. On a teacup ride, you go round and round whilst the outer bit goes round and round and that would mean, in a cooking sense, that you're cooking all sides evenly, whereas is this just going to cook the outside? I reckon this will need 15 minutes. Tomatoes to blister, onion to char a little bit and the fish to cook through. Remember, the metal skewer means it is again going to cook from inside and out as it rotates. Good question, Jay. Will you get a darker side on one than the other? Probably. Number four, bread dough. Now, there was a logical train of thought here. You know chimney cakes? 
Yes. Cooked over rotating spit. I was just thinking what cool stuff cooks on spits. And then I thought, let's do that. So we're going to try. This was a really smart idea when I had it and I didn't really think it all the way through. What I have made is a classic bread dough, um, three, five ratio, yeast, salt and sugar. And it's had plenty of proving time. So we've got this wonderful, wonderful dough. What are we hoping to gain from this? That's my thinking is you're never going to really have one of these and not have an oven. I mean, it's fine to say that Mike asked you to come up with four ideas and you ran out after three. <laughs> Lots of lovely ideas, but we decided bread was going to be one of those Jeopardy ones. We could make bread kebabs. You just make little dough balls, skewer them, skewer them, skewer them, skewer them. Bread that twists is, is something that I used to do on an open fire as a Boy Scout. Bread twists were excellent. Good dough. But can we do a, a dough ball one? Is that what you meant, Jay? Should we be basting them in like butter or oil? Yeah, let's get them on, get them turning, and then we'll glaze them. So the bread is yeasted, hasn't really got much flavour to it other than a pinch of salt. However, this is a garlic butter. So I just warmed up a uh, finely chopped garlic in some butter till it bubbled, took it off the heat, and then stirred through salt, pepper, and chives. Do you think it's obvious um, which one of those skewers were your idea? The one with the belly hanging over the edge, you mean? <laughs> The fish is the only one that we're not basting. Is that going to affect the moisture? The yoghurt should protect it. So like in a good tandoor oven, the yoghurt gives it almost a protective skin. <laughs> fish is done. Skewers have had 15 minutes while we were doing our bread twists. Little bit of spice peel our rice. Cucumber, tomato, lime pickle salad. Feast. Now I guess what we're hoping to replicate is that fierce heat of a tandoor. You're not going to get the fierce heat of a tandoor, but how close can we get? Some charring from the yogurt, a cooked succulent fish, listed tomatoes, charred onion. Give it a go. Do you know what? There is a slight difference on one side to the other, but it's not... Do you know what? It's not as noticeable as what I think it's going to be on the bread. The spices in that marinade were raw. Wow. Other than that, it's as they cook, they begin to sort of mellow into that. It's got quite a kick to it. That has got a kick to it. And actually, I have to say, unlike the chicken, that flavour goes right through. Yeah. Really juicy, but it hasn't got the same char on the outside that I was expecting. I couldn't get that on a normal grill. The fish would have stuck. That's not, it just Anything I could have done to avoid it wouldn't have worked. So that is far better than I could have done normally. I like the fact that you can do it and leave it. you got it going round, you just hook in seven, you leave it 15 minutes, you unhook seven, you can hook in another seven. You could just keep going. So it's up to you to make sure that everything that goes on the skewer is the same size and will cook at the same time. That's why they're cherry tomatoes, because they will cook really quickly, like the fish. I'd call that a success. Definitely. I would use that at my next social gathering, whenever that may be. Are we ready to see the other one. We're on a roll, mate. We should call it <laughs> You're getting better at this. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. What oh, is dear. that? <laughs> they, they should be dough balls. <laughs> I feel like you're undermining my idea. <gasps> dough balls. I'm not sure that's quite what I had in mind, but should we try them? Tasty, garlicky, buttery bread, but I wouldn't repeat them. Dough balls are great, actually. The smaller ones are better because they're cooked through. The bigger ones, still a bit raw in the middle, but keep them small. Dough balls, great. Would you again? Would I create seven skewers of dough balls? Yes, I would. As a recipe, as an idea, but I'm happy with it. Once you've skewered them up, you may as well whack them in the oven. I don't know if that's adding anything to it. In fact, gravity is kind of detracting from the end product. Nothing groundbreaking there. We're going to agree to disagree and call that one a... So as a bit of kitchen kit, what do you reckon? Fun, bit of a talking point. Unique with pineapple and rotisserie chicken. 
Will I use it every day with midweek cooking? No. Will I use it occasionally, maybe, when someone comes around? Yes, it's very cumbersome and that's 100 quid. If you've got the space, give it a go, because we've only done four things, so I bet there's 40 you could try. Okay, over to you. Comment down below, let us know, is that worth it? And what other kitchen gadget should we give our chefs to test? We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast, and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper. My overhang's getting a lot worse, isn't it, as it goes round? It's like Olaf. <laughs> <laughs>